welcome to a new episode of the Bubbles and Berries podcast. My name is Ode and I am coming to you from Edinburgh in Scotland and this is my podcast where I talk about my knitting, my sewing, some embroidery sometimes and all those nice um, crafty things. Uh, before we start, uh, I want to I just want to thank you for the very warm response to my last episode, which wasn't a regular podcast episode. It was my um, 2023 knitting plans episode. And yeah, so many of you uh, seemed to enjoy it, to have enjoyed it. So many of you left comments and it was just really lovely. And also that led to a lot of you uh, subscribing to uh, this channel. I think like the channel gained about a thousand subscribers after that video. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, that is a lot that is completely unexpected and I'm very grateful for it. Um, as I've said before, it's uh, things like that, like liking videos, commenting, sharing, subscribing that help our channels grow. And so I am very grateful to you for helping my channel grow. Um, since it started and especially since uh, the last episode. And thanks to all the all of you new subscribers, uh, we have gone over 2000 subscribers and we're almost at 3000, I think right now. So um, just to celebrate, because I think it's a nice thing to celebrate, I will do a little giveaway towards the end of um, the video. Um, what else do I want to say before we jump in? Um, maybe, I guess maybe because there are so many of you, uh, I might introduce myself a bit more. So like I said, my name is Ode. Uh, I live in Edinburgh, but I am originally from France. I've been living in Scotland for about four and a half years now, and I intend to stay. <laughs> um, I uh, live here with my husband, Kyle, and our three cats. Um, speaking of cats, um, <laughs> A few of you have said that you have been watching past videos, um, I guess because you're interested in knitting, but also in the hope of sighting the cats. Um, I usually have the door to my studio closed when I film those podcasts because they're, um, I don't want them rummaging around in the wool, but um, today <laughs> I've left the door open. So they're all asleep, but we'll see. Maybe one of them will make an appearance by the end of this um, episode. <laughs> Uh, something else, uh, I guess, oh yeah, maybe I should say, uh, so for a job, I have a shop called Bubbles and Berries, just like my podcast, and um, I make project bags and notions pouches and stitch markers for knitters, crocheters, all sorts of makers, and um, I guess what's maybe unique about uh, my bags, even though I think like all bag makers have their unique touches, uh, mine are embroidered. So I embroidered them myself and yeah, this is what I do. Um, my shop has been closed um, throughout December because I was taking a break, I was taking vacation. And then it has been closed throughout all of January pretty much because I wanted to take a bit of time to plan the upcoming year well and also uh, I'm, as I'm sure you may have heard, um, there's been issues with Royal Mail, so the, the British Postal System office, uh, which meant that um, up until today, I believe, and I am recording this on Thursday, the 26th, I think, of January, um, we, couldn't say, we couldn't send parcels uh, internationally, so outside of the UK. And so that sort of just told me to take a bit more time, plan the year well, and then not rush into opening the shop because like, even if someone ordered, or if, if you guys wanted, or anyone wanted to order things and were not in the UK, they would just have been like piling up in my, in my studio and I would have had to keep them and you would have had to wait longer to get them. So anyway, all that to say that the shop is reopened now, I'm reopening it as I'm publishing this podcast. So this, when you, when I first put it up on YouTube, it should be Friday, um, the 27th at 6.30. And um, yeah, I will talk more about the shop later again towards the end of the episode and sort of tell you um, what's going on, what new items are coming in and things like that. 
but first let's get on to the knitting so i am gonna go back to my normal podcast format if you've only joined since i was doing the first like the first couple episodes of january were a bit specials uh special but i'm gonna go back to the regular podcast uh, format where I'm going to first talk about my finished objects. I have two knitting finished object and one sewing and then I'll move on to works in progress and I have three works in progress and all of them are knitting and then I have a few acquisitions and then I'll talk about shop news and then the giveaway towards the end but all those um, parts will be da uh, linked down below with chapters or timestamps, I mean, so you can just click on the timestamps and jump to the part that you're most interested in, if that's what you'd like to do. And um, anything I will talk about will also be linked in the description box below, um, like patterns, yarn, uh, yeah, all the stuff that I talk about, you, you can find a link in the description box below as well as um, the link to my website, to my Ravelry and to my Instagram where you can follow me there if you would like. I post there a bit more often than I post on YouTube. So yeah, let's grab a cup of tea. Today I am drinking out of my sheep mug and I am drinking a delicious chai rooibos tea from, I think it's called Pico Tea Poke Tea. I don't know. It's a tea place in Edinburgh. And if you got the advent calendar by Zakami Yarn in this past December, that's where the tea that was included came from. And that's the tea that was included, the chai rooibos, and it's absolutely delicious. And I finished the one that I had in my calendar and I went back and bought a big bag because I love it. I guess I will link them down below as well. It's just a small shop, so it's always nice to support small businesses. They do ship across the UK, no problem, and I also believe that they ship internationally. So yeah, let's get started with the finished objects. The first one, I guess, is what I am wearing. I have briefly mentioned it in my What I Knit in 2022 episode, but I didn't really go into great detail because there was a lot of projects that I wanted to go through, and I said I was going to talk about it now. So let me just um, show you what it is. It is called the Crescendo Sweater. It's by um, the Knit Pearl Girl and I knit mine. Um, I think I was probably, it was a whip in my episode that I released towards the end of November and then I finished it like very early December. And this is what it looks like. So it is a really lovely um, sweater. It is a round yoke sweater, uh, knit top down. You start with the neckline. It's a folded um, neckline. You just start with that, fold it, um, and then knit the yoke, and then the body, the arms. I mean, it's just it's a very um, construction-wise, it's very um, <clears throat> simple, very standard when it comes to round yoke sweaters, but it's a very lovely pattern. And mine, so let me grab my iPad where I have my Ravelry so I can give you all the details because like I said, I finished it in December and I'm afraid I've forgotten a bit. So yeah, so the Crescendo um, sweater by the Knit Pearl Girl, I made the size C, uh, which was, I guess, a bit larger than um, what I would usually make. I had more positive ease, I believe, than what the pattern recommended, but that's because I wanted to, to be a bit oversized and cozy and, and nice. So this is what I made. I knit mine on uh, 6.5 millimeter needles, but I think the pattern called for seven. So it's, I got gauge on 6.5, so it's just always a matter of getting gauge more than um, using the same needle sizes. Also, I think I've said this in the past, but it was convenient for me because I did have a 6.5 millimeter needle in my um, Chiago interchangeable, interchangeable set, but I didn't have a seven millimeter. So yeah, 6.5 or 12 for me. And the yarn that I use is the Dorerum Natura Cyrano in the shade Aubépine. And so that yarn is, I think their thickest yarn, it's kind of like an Aran weight. Uh, let me see if I can, yeah, 150 meters per 100 grams. And it's all um, it's all merino, and it's really beautiful. It's really soft. I'm gonna come closer. Uh, let me see, so you can see 
Mm, that's a bit more orange than it is in real life. Yeah, I guess that's a true, that's the true representation of that color, I would say. Um, I think because the base of that yarn is a bit gray, um, you have kind of like that, those different colors, I guess. I don't know how to explain it, but let me see. I don't know if you can see, but anyway, it's very lovely yarn. It's a non superwash merino, so it's quite dry. It's also very um, bouncy. It has quite a bit of stretch, but it's like, it's, it's really fine to knit. It doesn't like, it's no different than knitting anything else, I don't think. It evens out really well when you block. And um, yeah, I would highly recommend it. It's really, really lovely. Uh, no itch because it's merino. Um, so it's, it's very soft and yeah, I like it a lot. I've worn it quite a few times, uh, a few times, especially around Christmas. And I think if I look at it, it may have like pilled, I don't know, like maybe like here, a teeny tiny bit, I don't know, like a very, very, very tiny bit, which is not very much compared to how much I've worn it and also which is something that I expect anyway it is merino merino pills a bit at first anyway so yeah no problem for me I'm fully expecting it to uh, pill more in the future and I am okay with that I knew that when I picked that yarn so um, yeah I love it overall I really love it I like wearing it the only thing is I think I made the sleeves a little bit too short like they're okay like when I guess that's like the longest that your sleeve is ever gonna like that like that your arm I guess is ever gonna be when you when you like bend your elbow and it's okay but I find that because it's a bit like it's thick yarn it's nice and squishy and it's a bit oversized I find that I'm always wanting to like wear it like this and they like, get cozy and the sleeves are not really long enough for that at the moment I have plenty of yarn left so I think what I will do eventually is I will take out take out the the cuffs and just knit the sleeves a bit longer and then do the cuffs again. Uh, again, because it's on su it's such thick yarn on such large needles, it's honestly gonna take me an hour probably. So yeah, I just need to get around to doing it. Uh, the thing I'm waiting for, I think, is that, um, so like I said, I used uh, 6.5 millimeters. I used Chiaogu needles. And uh, I thought when I first started it that the 6.5 or like 5.5 and up millimeter needles in Chiago didn't come as like many. You know those like, I think it's called the twist shorties or something that they have the red pouch and the blue pouch of like really short and you can do small circumference, right? And I didn't think that they had those in 6.5 millimeters and so I did all the sleeves on Magic Loop, which was fine. It's not, it's definitely not my, my preferred way of doing sleeves, but honestly it was okay. And then when I mentioned that the last time, one of you told me that they actually just come out with a shorty set for larger needles, which I think is very exciting. And um, I've been wanting to get it for a little while. And then I was like, um, I don't know. I don't use those needles very often. Maybe I don't need it. I can do magic loop when I use that. But then you'll see in my whip, I'm currently knitting something on 5.5 millimeter and I have a few projects on Ravelry that I would like to make a few patterns I would like to knit that also call for six or six and a half or something. And then I don't know, like next week is my birthday. So that was the excuse that I needed. And I ordered a set like just before recording this podcast. So yeah, I think I'm going to wait until I receive those. I am very excited and I will just lengthen the sleeves a little bit. I think that will just um, make it exactly how I want, even though it's really good the way it is now, it'll make it exactly how I want and uh, I will wear it more. All right, that was a long ramble for the first sweater. Let's move on to the second one. The second one, so many of you, <laughs> have um, asked that I talk about it. I'm just gonna uh, pull it up on my iPad so I know where it is, so I know all the specs I mean. And so the second finished object, which was finished just before Christmas because it was a Christmas present and which you have also seen in my um, What I Knit in 2022 video is the single malt, this purple sweater that I knit for my husband for Christmas. 
and here it is all finished and all um beautiful let me see what can i do okay i have a monitor like next where i'm looking right now uh to see what my camera sees the thing is it's mirrored so it's really breaking my brain when i'm trying to show you something <laughs> um but yeah this is what it looks like i will here post uh pictures of my husband wearing it and being all silly and goofy but so you can see how it fits him um i don't really exact remember exactly the measurement that we um, that we took I think I will, we I made the size five and that was the size with the recommended ease for his um, measurement so that was great and then in terms of height just to give you um, I guess a sense of like how it fits on whatever um, my husband is about six feet tall so yeah you just get a sense um, so the pattern is the single malt by uh, Max the Knitter. It is a very popular pattern. So many people have knitted it last year. I know so many of you have been making it this year as well. It seems to be a go-to pattern for people who want to knit um, something for like men in their lives, I guess. And I understand why. It is a really nice pattern. It's really easy, it has a bit of texture, which adds a bit of interest and uh but doesn't make it difficult to knit either it's still very mindless and yeah i like it i like it a lot it was a joy to knit and um yeah so like i said i did the size five uh for kyle and i used needles five millimeters and four millimeters which is what the pattern called for again it doesn't it's not because the pattern says that that you have to do this but i got gauge on those needles so that worked great for me and uh the yarn that i use is a yarn from JC Rennie, which is a mill in the Highlands in Scotland. They do a lot of beautiful yarn that they sell in balls as well as in cones. And so uh, in this case, I got an 850 gram cone of yarn. Um, they also do 500 grams, but that would not have been enough. I think I used nearly 600 grams. So yeah, I got the 850 um, gram cone of their, what they call chunky lamb's wool. So it is lamb's wool and it is, they call it chunky, but it's an air and weight. So just so you know, and they have lots of beautiful colors and the beautiful, and the color that I, well, not that I chose, that my husband picked, cause he picked the color is blueberry. And this is what it looks like. I think you might be able um, to see. Yeah, you can see the depth. So it's purple, but it's got a bit of pink, a bit of blue. Yeah, in the sun here, you can see it really well. And yeah, it is it is absolutely amazing. So the, the yarn came on the cone, which they call greasy cone for a good reason. It still has a fair amount of um, spinning oil on it. Um, it smells, I will say that, it smells quite strongly. I don't mind it, but just FYI. Um, and um, yeah, so I knitted it I yeah I knitted it with just straight from the cone you could wash the yarn first uh, if you want it if the smell was too strong or if you wanted to I don't know just if you want it but I, I knit straight from the cone and I washed it later so that meant that while I was knitting I did get a bit of spinning oil on my fingers and I made sure to really wash my hands every time I stopped I had I was careful not to touch my face or things like that um and then I washed it, it took a few washes. So that's usually what happens if you knit from a cone that has spinning oil on it, you usually do have to do a couple couple washes and a few rinses, more than you would do for with like another kind of non-oily, just random yarn. Um, but yeah, so this one took, I think two or three soaks. So just like, leaving it in, clean water with wool wash. So I did that once and then I um, squeezed the water out and then refilled the tub with clean water and do it, did it again and soap and did it again. I did that three times. And then after that, I think I rinsed it in, in the sink like five or six times just with just running, like running cold water and like squeezing it every time. And then that allowed me to get all the oil out. So it's a bit higher it's a bit more work washing it, but honestly, personally, I don't mind. I think it's worth it because the yarn is absolutely beautiful. And because, I mean, yarn on cones, 
I guess because you don't have because the the you don't pay basically for the washing and the winding in in balls, as, which is what you part of what you pay for when you buy a, a skein or a ball of yarn. Obviously, because they, it it comes not washed yet and all of this, then it's cheaper. I think the cone, if I remember correctly, the eight hundred and fifty gram cone cost me about thirty two pounds, which is like it's really cheap. The yarn is really beautiful, and to me, that's definitely that like the price and also it being from a cone and not having to join the gazillion ends um to me that's definitely worth clean like spending more time washing it afterwards um the smell stayed a bit after i washed it nothing as not nearly as strong as when i was knitting it but stayed a bit and now if you like even after like a little bit over a month, like if you really put your nose in it, it still smells a bit, but I don't mind it and my husband doesn't mind it and like other people would have to be really close to him to actually smell it. So um, yeah, I don't think it's a problem. My husband absolutely loves him, loves it, um, loves the sweater. He's been wearing it tons, which makes me very happy. And yeah, I had to tell him this morning, he was like, you can't wear your purple sweater today because I need it for the podcast. So he... Um, He's wearing something else to work today um but um yeah he absolutely loves it and that makes me really happy and so far the yarn has worn um really well there's again a very tiny i don't know if you can see let me see i don't know it's really hard to see because the yarn is also quite like it bloomed quite a lot so it's quite squishy there's a very very tiny bit of pilling but considering how much he's worn it and that he's very hard wearing on his um, sweaters, completely normal. Also, it's not as wool, it's a soft wool, so I'm assuming that's also the kind of wool that's going to pill for a little while and then after a couple of shaves it's going to stop. So yeah, but I don't feel like it needs shaving just yet, like nowhere near. So um, yeah, it is a, a beautiful sweater, highly recommend the pattern, highly recommend that yarn as well unless you're really um you really don't like things that smell too strong but you can also get that yarn in balls that's already been washed and everything and so that shouldn't smell or the smell should be very faint so yeah you can get jc rennie yarn not on a cone um and yeah i think that's all i have to say about it so yeah it was really fun i have like i think i've mentioned it before but i have quite a bit of yarn left i mean quite a bit just like a, maybe two three hundred grams so I think I'm going to make him a hat out of the leftover and um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. That's a project for another time. I also really like the texture. It's just, it's really easy. It's just knits and pearls, but I think it, it looks really nice. So yeah, that is finished object number two. I will now give the sweater back to my husband so he can wear it to a, his heart's content. And... Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna get another sip of tea before it gets cold. Oh, someone had asked me before if I could compare quickly um, Jessie Rennie cones and woolly knit cones. And um, I was thinking, because I've also been using yarn from cones from Jameson and Smith, I have not used um, Holst just yet, but I want to. And I have used cones from Iona, Iona Wool. So maybe if that's of any interest to you, let me know in the comments below if it is. Um, in the future, I can do just a quick, quick video just comparing all the cones that I've used. But um, just right now for the uh, JC Rennie and um, Wooly Knit, uh, Jessie Rennie has quite a bit of oil on it, spinning oil. I don't think wool in it has any spinning oil on it because it smells just very faintly, but it also doesn't feel like it has that oil on it, so I don't think it does. Uh, in terms, someone asked in terms of softness, that's a bit tricky because wool in it is, uh, I think it's a mix of wool. The Jessie Rennie that I used was lamb's wool, so I think lamb's wool, regardless, is going to be a bit softer. Um, and, but I know JC Rennie also has cones of Shetland wool, so that might be a bit closer to what the woolly knit cones are. Uh, the JC Rennie lamb's wool is very soft, um, kind of like almost merino soft. Um, the, 
woolly knit, like you can tell it's rustic wool. It's not itchy on, itchy on me, but I could see it maybe being itchy on other people or people who are more sensitive. Um, and then in terms of blooming after washing and blocking and all of this, um, the Jesse Rennie that I had on the cone bloomed quite a lot. I think that's also due to the fact that it had um, a bit of like a fair amount of spinning oil on it. I don't know if it would bloom as much if you were knitting from balls of yarn from them. Um, wool in it doesn't really bloom in the colors that I've used anyway. So I've used a dark blue, I've used, I think it's called like navy or something. I've used the green, loden green, and I will show you later. I'm currently using a gray and those don't really bloom. Um, and then they don't, I guess, I guess you can stretch them out in, block, in blocking if you want, but they also don't, on, of their own, they don't really move during blocking. So what you knit is what you get. Uh, you don't really need to worry about it growing um, unless you want to stretch it to make it grow. So yeah, that's just to quickly answer that question that I had, but if you would like, I can make another shorter video comparing uh, more systematically, I guess, and with the like, clear, I guess, criteria or characteristics. Uh, the various uh, cones of yarns that I have used. Let me know. Anyway, moving on to uh, my third finished object, which, like I said, is a sewing project. So I don't, all, I haven't always shown my sewing in the past. I don't sew as much as I knit, but I do sew a fair amount. And I just, sometimes I just didn't, didn't show it. But I think in 2023, I'd like to be a bit better about that and also show my sewing because it is a big part of what I make. It is part of me wanting to make as much of my own clothes as I can or as I know. Um, so yeah, I'm going to show my sewing if that's all right with you. And so the third finished object is kind of very basic. It's not the most exciting sewing project, but it is, sorry, it is one that is very useful. Um, very practical and that I knit and that I knit <laughs> that I wear all the time and it is basic white t-shirts <laughs> so this is one of them it's just your your basic white tee short sleeves uh, made of cotton jersey and I wear those all the time basically I work from home so when I'm home, usually I wear black leggings, a t-shirt, and then one of my knit sweaters on top. And I had a few t-shirts, but I bought them, I think from H&M or something a while ago, probably before COVID, and they just, they've just gone old, you know, like they've just lost their shape, like lost the, like the color faded, and even after you wash them, you know, when you get to the point where even after you wash them, they still don't smell very good. Um, yeah, it was time for new t-shirts. The thing is, I didn't want to buy t-shirts from H&M again because, first of all, I don't want to support them. Uh, and also, like, and I'm, I mean, no judgment, like, if you want to shop at H&M, that's, like, you do you, right? But I, like, if I, if I can avoid it, I try. And um, also, I can sew. And I thought I would give it a go because I never worked with stretchy fabrics before. And I thought that would be a nice, easy beginner project. And yeah, it is super easy. If you got, if you have an overlocker or a serger, and again, you can do it without, but it's easier with, it's just so easy. It doesn't, it takes an hour to make a t-shirt and cotton jersey, the kind of fabric that you would use for a t-shirt is usually fairly cheap. So for something that is better quality that you're gonna, you're gonna find in like, I don't know, like Zara, H&M, like those kind of shops, like not the high end, shops but yeah so i decided to make some myself and i had this big bit of white cotton jersey that i bought years ago um that i haven't used so i tried it out with this and yeah i made myself some um some some t-shirts some basic white tee i think i had about four meters of fabric if i remember correctly i bought two meters but then there was a stain somewhere towards like the two meter mark and so the woman gave me like two meters after the stain and told me like oh you can just keep that bit and so I ended up having nearly four meters I made five t-shirts out of that which was great the pattern that I used is from 
this book so like i said i'm i'm french but i live in in the uk and i learned to sew in france and so i guess i use a lot of french patterns for sewing it's just what i'm used to um but yeah anyway i, I used a pattern from this book which is called coudre le stretch which means like sewing stretchy fabrics and it's basically like a lot of basics and so there's different kinds of t-shirts but i chose this pattern and it's kind of like make your own t-shirt kind of thing that if you can see uh, let me see that there's one pattern that allows you to make all of these kinds of t-shirts and so it says um one pattern for like eight necklines three sleeve length and three body length and you can all combine them and make whatever t-shirt you want and it explains really well like how to sew the different bits together how to handle stretchy fabric and all this so it's really great a really great book uh i think if you're looking for something not similar to the book but similar to the pattern that i use for the t-shirt i think in english tilly and the button has something and i'm gonna try and remember to look it up and add it to the links in the description so yeah that is the first one that i made and i made it uh to pattern and i love it it fits really great um i basically chose the size based on like i used and the book tells you to do that like you get your favorite t-shirt even if it's in like it's near death basically like all like stretched out and whatever just your your favorite one and then you measure from this and then you pick the size from the book that is closer to that as opposed to uh using your body measurement because of stretchy fabric behaves a bit differently obviously um so yeah so i made this to pattern um and then it, it fit really great but after i made this first one to try i realized that i liked it a bit when the sleeves if the sleeves could be shorter because the on the t-shirt the sleeves like go to kind of here and i like it on my t-shirts to be a bit shorter so for the next four ones that i made out of the rest of the fabric that i had i just did the sleeves just a tiny bit shorter like three centimeters and yeah they fit great the the fabric is nice it's a nice cotton jersey nice and thick everything is knit is um sewn or like assembled the pieces are assembled together using the overlocker my serger and then i did a bit on like the hems of the arms and the body and then on the neckline i did just a line of sewing with the what is it called the double needle what is it called yeah double needle from on a regular sewing, mach sewing machine and that worked really great i never used that double needle or twin needles i think it's called twin needles i never used it before but it worked great and now i have five white t-shirts that i wear all the time which is really great i love having basics like that i love sewing like nice dresses and nice fabric and and everything but i also the reality of my life is that i wear basics a lot on the day-to-day -day when i'm working and then i wear my other nicer things when i go out and so it's nice that i also make some basics so yeah um that is all the finished objects that i have and we will move on to works in progress but first some tea All right, so works in progress. So the first one is one that is nearly finished and I don't think I have shown it on the podcast before because it is um, the project that I'm making with my advent calendar. And if I remember correctly, I think the last regular podcast episode came out before December 1st. So I hadn't started opening my advent calendar. And yeah, so like I said, I in the past i got an advent calendar from zakami yarn on their 100 percent corydale base 12 skeins i actually ended up getting 16. um melinda of zakami yarn and i are, are friends we see each other every week at midnight and we exchange yarn and things sometimes and she just given me an extra four minis that she had so i had 16 mini skeins and um I decided to make the Radvent throw 
by Emba O'Brien with my yarn. I put a picture of what the pattern is supposed to look like just here and then I will show you where I'm at. So I have now done all the squares. So as, as you can see on the picture, it's you knit a bunch of squares and then you join them all together with the crochet hook. I think I haven't really looked yet how to do this because this is where I am. I've done the squares and now I need to join them. And yeah, so let me show you a few. I have quite a pile of like beautiful colors and I'm not gonna show them all to you, but I'll show you like, I'll show you a few. So this is one, let me find some of my favorites. They're all really beautiful, but oof, this is one. This is one of my favorite. I love those colors. Um, there's mostly browns and greens. There's a little bit of, of blue like this. Um, some have a bit of purple. It's really lovely. And then, yeah, one last one. I will show you this one. Yeah. Anyway, really lovely yarn. I love, like, uh, Melinda is my friend, and so that's one thing. But, like, even if she weren't my friend, I love her yarn. Like, the, the colorways are absolutely beautiful. Um, so, yeah, so now I have this pile, and I am going to... All I need to do, all I need to do, I think it's going to take a bit of time, is to join them together. And I think what I'm going to use for that is this yarn. So I've shown this yarn before. This is kicked up from this really big cone that I have, one kilo cone from Len Paysan, that French brand. I've, I mentioned it in my last, um, my 2023 knitting plan video. And it's kind of this neutral, a bit warm, a bit beige yarn and I think it will go well with all those colors. Uh, I've been debating for a very long time um, whether I wanted to do the border and the join in beige or in gray and then um, I got tired of myself not being able to make a decision and I just picked one and I picked this one. Um, so yeah I will hopefully I will show it to you next time when I have the whole blanket as a whole and not just a pile of squares. One thing that I would like to say about, um, let me check because I've written a note, there was something specific I wanted to say. Um, yeah, so one thing that I would like to say about this pattern. So the reason I chose it originally is because I thought that each square was meant to use all 20 grams of a mini skein. And I thought that was great because I do not want to have, I didn't want to have leftover and in the past, I've had an advent calendar and I used a pattern that ended up only using 10 grams and I just didn't know what to do with the rest. Um, I gifted it, I sent it over to someone, but yeah, this year I didn't really want to do that. And so I thought each square of this pattern was meant to use 20 grams. It wasn't the case. I followed the pattern and um, after I reached the, sort of the end of the chart, I, I still had like seven or eight grams left and I was like, oh. I don't want to have that like what am I going to do with all this like I could make a scrappy socks but I mean I know that's never going to happen so thankfully the pattern is still very well made in that those squares are actually knitted in the round so you start in the middle here and then you knit in the round and so and it's the repetition it's very easy and so what I did is that I kept on knitting until I had no more yarn or like a gram left or something and so that means that my squares are actually quite bigger than they are on the pattern. I think on the pattern, like when I stopped at where the pattern tells you to stop, I think I would have had a square of about like 21 centimeters by 21 centimeters. And with these, I have, it's about 28. Like I was able to, it was quite easy because I was able to block them to the size of a blocking mat, like one square of blocking mat, one piece. And so, yeah, that was great. So this is what I have. So my squares are bigger, which I like. Um, it means that I used all the yarn and I think with 16 squares, I'm going to do a blanket of four by four. And I think I should end up with a blanket of about, I don't know, 110 centimeters, like each side as a square, which I think is, uh, I'm, I'm intending 
that as sort of a, a lap blanket to have on my legs when I work and it's cold. I don't, I'm not thinking of it as a like big blanket to put on the bed or something. So yeah, that's a size I'm pretty happy about. Um, and yeah, this is this whip. I will get back to you next time, hopefully with the finished blanket. On the pattern, it has kind of like a border of garter stitch, but I don't think I'm going to do that because I don't think it looks very nice. And also, I think by this time, I will be kind of lazy and tired of working on this project. So I think I'm just going to join all the squares together with the crochet hook or whatever method it is, and then just crochet a chain all around the, um, the blanket. And that will be that. So yeah. All right, moving on. My second work in progress is a pair of mittens. And this is not, <laughs> so you will see that my next two works in progress are, um, are not, were not in my, what I'm gonna make in 2023 videos. So we're starting off the year really well, <laughs> aren't we? Uh, but yeah, it's just, I needed mittens. It's been quite cold lately and I didn't have mittens and I was like, I need to do something. And so I am making the um, uh, har harvest season mittens by Albiona. And this is what it looks like. And so, yeah, so the Harvest Mittens by Albiona, I have one made. And then for the other one, I've only cast on, I've only just cast it on, but um, when I finished the first one, I just casted it on, this on right away. So I don't have like second mitten syndrome, I guess, which is never something I really struggle with, but just in case. Uh, I am knitting them on Magic Loop to, on the needles that are, recommended in the pattern. I didn't swatch, but they fit just fine. Let me put this one on my hand so you can see. I haven't blocked it yet, but yeah, this is what it looks like. And so you might wonder, just like I did before I chose this pattern, I was thinking, you know, mittens with lace, kind of, is that gonna be actually warm? It actually is really warm. Just like, just saying it is really warm, uh, even with the lace. Um, and then when it's very windy, because we can have like really cold wind here, I usually wear underneath, I have um, running gloves. I, I, I run quite a bit that are windproof. And so I just put those underneath and for the wind and then I put the mittens on top for the warmth. And yeah, it's a really fun pattern. pattern. It's really easy to make. It has a chart that you can follow, but it's also uh, very intuitive. And it's very quick. I made this one in like two evenings in front of the TV and I have the other one to make now. The yarn that I am using, I have no idea what it is. So it is beautiful. I will say that. Um, I think it was like just after I started my podcast, I, a lovely viewer sent me a small parcel of yarn um and there was this one in it and it had no label or anything so i don't know exactly what it is i think it's probably a sport weight uh, given the the thickness but yeah it is this beautiful um gray yarn it is it is rustic uh, i don't know what fiber it is it is it is rustic but it's not itchy to me i wonder if maybe there's a bit of gotland in it or yeah, I just, I don't know what it is, but it works perfectly for this project. So this is what I'm using for it. I also think that I'm going to have quite a lot of yarn left. So I'll, I'll have a look at how much I actually used for the mittens and how much I have left. And then maybe with the leftover, I'll make mittens for my husband because he said that he actually would like some. He also has just sort of like windproof thin gloves, but they don't, they don't work that well when it's just really cold. So... Yeah, I think I might do that. But yeah, that is my second work in progress and a pair of mittens that wasn't planned, but that I'm really enjoying and that is knitting up really quickly. So um, yeah, I would highly recommend this pattern. If you've been here before, you know how much I love Albiona's pattern. And to start with, I was looking at all sorts of mitten patterns online and I was like, oh, I don't know what I want to make. I hadn't really planned this. I don't know what that yarn is. I don't know. And I was like, you know what? Just go back to Albiona's like, pattern library. I'm sure you'll find something there. You love her pattern. You know how they work. They're always like everything that I've knit from her, I've loved and, and yeah, and I found those and I'm really, really happy with them. I am keeping it, my yarn and my project in this cute little bag. 
um, which is one of mine. Like I said, at the start, I make bags, project bags, embroidered project bags. And so this is one of mine. This is the small size. It's great for one skein thing. So hat, mittens, socks, it's, it's perfect for that. I love it. And this is my bumblebee design. So yes, so that is work in progress number two. And then work in progress number three is another one that I have, that you haven't heard about in my 2023 knitting plan video because I wasn't planning on doing it, but I am very happy that I'm knitting on it right now. And it is a lento. I'll put a picture of the pattern picture here. But as I'm sure many of you know, if you watch other podcasts, um, Rebecca of the Crea Bea podcast and Amy of the Meaningful Stitch podcast, are running a knit along on Instagram called Let's Lento. And basically it's everyone knits a one or more, I think. <laughs> Some people are making more um, Lento sweaters. So the Lento patterns comes from Lino magazine of summer 2021. It's this one, the li lilac cover. And if I thought this, this through, I would have put a uh, bookmark in it, which I clearly didn't do. Let me see. Oh, there it is. And this is what it is. It is a very lovely basic raglan with a folded neckline that is knit as quite a at quite a loose gauge. So the pattern calls for a fingering and a mohair, so kind of like a like DK kind of yarn on six millimeter needle. So quite a loose gauge, very airy, very flowy. And yeah, lovely pattern, very easy construction, definitely a beginner pattern. If you're um, a new knitter or if you're new to garment, highly recommend this one. The pattern is really well written. So um, yeah, and I think it is now available as an individual pattern on Ravelry. You don't necessarily need to buy the whole um, magazine. Although there's very nice patterns in there. So if you wanted to, I don't think you would be disappointed. And so I wasn't really planning to join this knit along at first because I had other projects and, and things like that. But then the my friends at Knit Night sort of said like, oh, how about we all make lentos and things like that. And so here we are. I'm also making a lento. I am making, I'm going to show it in a minute, but just... Um, just so I don't forget. So I am making size two, which I think will be a little bit, I have got fluff in my nose, which I think will be a bit oversized for me. So the pattern says that you should aim for about five inches or 12.5 centimeters of positive ease. Um, and so my bust circumference for reference is about 87 centimeters. So if I do that, I would be to like, I don't know, 99, 100 centimeter um like chest measurement of the finished garment right and the thing is that they don't really have that so the first size has a bust circumference of 96 so which is too small for me that would be i mean not too small but that would be nine centimeters of positive ease which is like a lot a lot less than the pattern recommends and then the next one is 107 so there's quite a big jump in there um and so yeah, so what I decided to do was to knit the second size, so the one that's 107 centimeters, uh, bust circumference, but then to go down in needle sizes. So I swatched with the six millimeter that the pattern recommends. I got gauge, but also I thought the fabrics was a bit too, like too airy. I'm not a big fan of the look of like really open gauge, open like that's not really my thing. Um, and so I went to 5.5. So I think that will just like take it down a bit. Like they would be just a little bit smaller, not so, not that much. And I'm happy to have something that's a bit um, oversized, but um, yeah. And also the fabric that I get on 5.5 is much better or to my preference anyway. It's, I like it a lot more. Um, so yeah, so I started this last night and I am knitting it. Well, let me show you, let me show you. This is what it looks like. So I've done the neckline. I have done the short rows and now I'm just on the raglan. And this is what it looks like. I'm using 
a lot of my stitch markers so that's from my moon phases set in silver so i have a new moon i have a crescent moon and i have another crescent moon and a full moon that's for my raglan and then for the beginning of round and also a progress keeper because i'm counting rows right now for the raglan i'm using some markers from a brand new set that will be in the shop on friday and it's these like uh, i don't think this one you can see so well because of the of the light oh yeah here we go a snowflake and then some sort of red winter berries anyway so yeah this is what it looks like it's incredibly soft and incredibly fluffy and i love it and the yarn that i am using is a cone of woolly knit a gray cone of woolly knit that i bought a while ago when there was a sale or something and i think when i received it i thought the gray was a bit darker than i had hoped it is the let me see smoke gray and then it sort of like sat on my shelf i wasn't really sure what i was going to do with it and then it turned out that it's great for this project because i am also knitting it with um this yarn which is drops brushed alpaca silk so it's a bit thicker than your usual mohair and yeah it gives me um it gives me a fabric that i like a lot let me show you again yeah it's a fabric that it's still like it's still quite um airy and it's gonna have beautiful drape but it's not like so the gauge isn't so big that you can actually see through the stitches which is not something that i like very much the fluff really fills it in so yeah i have to say i was a bit concerned at first so i ordered the drops alpaca specifically for this project because i didn't have any and i like it a lot it's very soft uh, alpaca silk or brushed alpaca or suri alpaca or whatever works a lot better for me I, I find more hair itchy so i used uh i like using this but honestly when i got it and i don't know if you're gonna see but this is it in the bag and it looked i think here's okay it looked almost it's the off-white color but it looked kind of creamy like it it tends towards the sort of beige cream kind of color and not like the bright white i was like oh i don't know is that gonna look good with the gray is it gonna make it a bit muddy or something and yeah it works fine i think it's always good to swatch because you don't really know uh, especially when you use fluff with something else like the color of the something else is is gonna change the color of the fluff and everything so yeah, just so you know, if you buy this specific color of uh, brushed alpaca silk from Drops, that, yeah, the white is not like a true white, but it still works great uh, as a white with other yarn. So, yeah. I started this last night. I knit a little bit this morning, but it's knitting really, really quickly. It's knitting up really quickly. Um, and I'm really happy and really excited to have sort of a very warm and cozy fluffy light gray sweater that will go with everything so yeah i think that's all i have to say about this project i'm going to put it back in the bag and i just see i don't have a lot of this left i'm going through this one quite quickly so i'm planning to take this to night at night night and i just need to remember to take another skein of alpaca silk because i might finish it let me just check my notes and see if I have something else to say about this project. Um, no, I don't even think I've added. Oh no, I did add it to my Ravelry. Uh, yeah. This is all I have to say. Hopefully by the next time, I mean, not hopefully, I'm pretty sure that by the next time I record a podcast, it will be, um, it will be finished and I will be able to show it to you then. All right, let's move on to the next section which is acquisition i don't have a lot like i said i have two yarn acquisition and a fabric acquisition so i'm going to start let me just start with the fabric acquisition so like i said before my t-shirts were quite a success my white t-shirt and so i thought it'd be nice to have some black as well it just goes with everything um it's always i think useful to have black t-shirts 
and so I bought some black fabric from Minerva so which Minerva is a fabric online fabric store in in the UK they have a lot of things I love ordering from them they have pretty much everything that you can think of um, everything that you might want and this is the fabric that I got it's just white uh, white it's just black very basic black but whereas the white fabric that I had was I think probably a medium weight cotton jersey I wanted something that was maybe a bit lighter in weight and also have more drape and so for the black I went with a viscose jersey and um, I don't know if you can see somewhere the way I have it folded let me see I don't know maybe you can see if it, it flows a bit more it's more drapey it's a bit thinner too and so yeah my plan over the next couple of weeks or so is to I have about 2.5 meters and it is to knit, uh, not knit, so black t-shirts. I think in 2.5 meters I can make three, possibly four. I've been wondering if maybe I wanted to make them v-neck because I like v-neck sweaters, but maybe not. I think maybe I'll just make exactly the same as I made before because I intend to wear them under sweaters. I don't really have v-neck sweaters and even if I did have v-neck sweaters, I would probably wear like a button shirt under that. So, um, yeah, I think I'm just going to make them run neck. Also, because if I knit something that is a bit itchy, then having a t-shirt sort of here, come up to here with a crew neck as opposed to a v-neck, leaving my skin exposed here, it would make it less, it would prevent itching and things like that. So I think this is what I, um, I will do. I still want to make v-neck t-shirts, but then I think I'll just get maybe nicer fabric or just more like different colored fabric. So I have just one v-neck t-shirt, but in different colors. And um, yeah, but that's that's for another time. So that is my first acquisition. It is fabric. Second acquisition, you, oh, sorry. I forgot to take it out of the bag, rustling, rustling. It is, you have seen it in my, 2023 plans uh, video and it is this beautiful cone by Jameson and Smith. There you can see the color really well. It is this lovely, lovely cone of green yarn. It is their jumper weight two ply that you, it's basically your fingering weight yarn. And I bought this, like I said in my previous episode, so I'm not gonna talk about it at length. I've got this to make the circuit, I guess, I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, cardigan by Kate Davis. I'll put a picture on the side here and this is a the pattern calls for DK so I'll just hold it double and in case you are interested so this is a 500 gram cone uh, I think it has a little bit of spinning oil on it but nothing like not nearly as much as the JC Rennie ones and the shade is FC12 and the last time not the time when I ordered this but before um, when I ordered yarn from Jameson and Smith, I had um, I'd ordered the shade card as well. They have shade cards that you can get. And so I was able to choose the shade of green that I wanted from the shade card as opposed to from the website because the colors are not always like with computer screens, you know, the colors don't always look right. And I was right because on the website, this color looks a lot more brown uh, than it actually is in real life. So, yeah. Um, just showing it again and I'm gonna sneeze I think <coughs> sorry <coughs> ah, sorry there we go <laughs> sorry uh, I think it's the fluff so yeah acquisition number two and then last but not least acquisition number three is these three balls of um, knitting for olive yarn they're really beautiful. I love them a lot. I have never knit with Knitting for Olive. I know, who hasn't? Me. Uh, I'm really excited to knit with that. This is their uh, Extra Fine Merino, 250 meter per 50 grams, in the famous shade Dusty Artichoke. And I bought this because I would like to make a camisole number five 
for by my favorite things knitwear for the summer. I'll put a picture here on, uh, of the pattern, but you may have seen it around because I think it's quite a popular pattern and um, heavily influenced by a podcaster <laughs> with that choice. Um, I have started to watch recently uh, Florence of Handmade by Florence, the lovely podcast and she had made one in another shade but she had made one and I think it just looks really beautiful and I want one so I bought some yarn to make one and also that means that I will be able to try knitting for Olive which I'm really excited about um so yeah I will keep you posted when I make this but I'm really excited the yarn is really soft like again that's the first time that I'm holding this yarn and it is incredibly soft. I really like this color too. I can see myself wearing this in summer with maybe um, like an oversized linen, like white button shirt or something. I have some patterns in mind. I have some fabric in mind. So I might make myself a shirt like that and then just jeans and like white sneakers or something. I think that would look really nice and would be quite comfortable. In summer, summers don't get really, really hot in Scotland. Um, so it's completely fine to wear wool and even then like it's a really um, it's a fine fingering weight merino and I don't think that actually really keeps you super warm in summer it's really good at regulating temperature so yeah I'm really looking forward to that I think I might cast it on sometime in March or something and I will show it to you when I'm working on it all right uh, this is all the yarny stuff that I wanted to talk to you about. All my knitting, my sewing, as well, some fabric things. And yeah, I hope I hope you enjoyed that. And I'm gonna have another sip of tea because I don't have a lot left and it's kind of gone cold. <laughs> and then I will move on to the next section, which is shop news. All right, so shop news. So like I said at the start, I have a shop where I make hand embroidered project bags and notions pouches and stitch markers. And this shop was has been closed for the past couple of months. Part of it, part of the reason is I needed to take a break, a Christmas break. I went, um, I took a vacation basically. And uh, January was just a few weeks that I took to really plan the year ahead. And also there were issues with Royal Mail, so it, because a lot of my customers are usually abroad and I couldn't ship abroad, I thought maybe it was okay if I just didn't reopen the shop quite yet. Um, it is open now as of um, my recording, this, my publishing this podcast. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm reopening it Friday, the 27th of January at 6.30. So it's probably open as you're watching this. And yeah, I'm really excited, really excited for a new year. The shop did really well last year, thanks to all of you and your lovely orders. I'm very happy and very grateful. And I hope 2023 is going to be a good year as well. There's a few new things in the shop uh, regarding project bags. So this is like... They look like this, basically. This is one that I showed you before. Um, and so these bags were available up until now in size small. So that's the one I just showed you. In size medium, which is good for two, three skeins projects like shawls or kids' garments. And now they will be available in large, uh, large size, which is the same, just bigger. And I think the large size are I mean, I don't think, I know the large size hold like five to seven skeins. So they, sh they should be fine for most, um, most sweaters uh, and jumpers and larger projects like that. So that's really exciting. So these are available in the shop now. And then I have also added quite a few Notions pouches. Um, this is the one that I'm using right now myself. Uh, I have a initials collection where you can pick your initial and then the little floral bits come in three color palettes so anyway that's the one I'm using right now so you can have a look but I um, I created a, a few more notions pouches with designs that were similar to some that were on my bags so that they could 
be a set. This is what I did when I designed my autumn collection last year with mushrooms. I made a bag, a notions pouch and a set of stitch markers and that worked really well. A lot of you really enjoyed having the full set and so I thought I would make uh, stitch markers and notions pouches to match the bags that are already in the shop. So those could also be um, part of a set. And just as an example, this is one of the new ones. This is, uh, it goes with my bag called Springtime on the Line. And it's got little socks and little flowery bits. And yeah, and the other ones are up on the shelf here, but you'll see them in the shop. I'm not gonna show every one of them to you because we're gonna be there for a while otherwise. So yeah, so more stitch markers in the sh and more notion pouches in the shop, as well as more stitch markers. So uh, the little bag with the B that I just showed you didn't have matching stitch markers. So I made, I made some, let me see if I can, uh, show them to you it's always a bit tricky on the camera but it has a a bee and a little pink flower that's like on the on the bag and a little white flower it actually has two pink flowers and two white flowers in the set i'll put a picture of the whole set here like in a better because those are mine i'm using them right now so they're like on a yeah i put a picture of them on a nice card the second stitch marker set coming in is the one that goes with the springtime on the line design. So the little socks, I just showed you the notions pouch and same thing. So it's got some um, socks and then some flowers as well that are the same as on the bag. Again, I'll put a picture so you can see better. And then my third one, which is a brand new one, which, um, I guess it can go with the, it's intended to go with the one of my bag that has uh, a fir tree on it. Uh, I'll put a picture here because I don't have one just here with me. And so it's a set of three stitch marker and it's stitch marker, the stitch markers and it has the red berry one and the snowflakes one that was on my sweater that I sh showed you before. And then the third one is this, it's a pine cone. And I hope you can see it well, I have no idea. So yeah, there we go. <laughs> and so yeah, those are new stitch markers coming to the shop. As always, whenever you order a stitch marker set, you can choose if you want all the markers in the set to have jump rings. So that's like to when you're knitting, like to do beginning, beginning of round and things like that. Or if you want them to have um, a lobster clasp, so that's more like uh, progress keepers or if you crochet. Or you can choose to have like a little bit of both um, in your set and then there's a little text box where you can tell me which of the markers on the set you want to have jump rings and which of the markers you want to have lobster class and I'll just I'll just do that for you that's no problem at all so that they're really tailored to your needs and how you use uh, markers yourself um what else do I want to say about the shop did I put more notes on that I think that's pretty much it to be honest about the shop it's just reopened Oh yeah, um, something that I want to say is that, so I'm not doing shop updates per se, so that those shop updates were like, oh, let's rush because if you don't buy it just when the, uh, the update opens, then they're gonna run out and whatever. This is very stressful, I find, for me as a customer when other shops do that or when something I want um, is released in that way. And it is, so I'm assuming it's also stressful for you. And then it's also quite stressful for me as a maker just, just to have a big amount of order coming in all at once and then it's a bit overwhelming. And I don't think it works for anyone to be honest. So the way I'm doing it is that I list a few of each of the items available in my shop and then I make them as the orders come and I restock them as I ship the orders basically. So that means that um, if so there may be time where some items are not available because I have sort of reached capacity to how much I can make at that moment, but they will be restocked as soon as I'm done and as I'm shipping the ones that have been ordered. And usually that's maybe a week or something like that. So it's not like once a month is your chance to order something. It's just that like either you go 
onto the shop because you would like something and it's available and if it's not available that is going to be in a few days it's really like yeah and there's no need to rush or any of that and i think this is what i did for the second half of last year before that i did big shop updates but the second half of last year worked so much better for everyone i think so i'm going to keep doing that and um yeah and if you ever have any question about an order a product something just always there's an email address on my website so you can just email me uh, email me there and I'll be happy to answer your questions um, yeah so that's that's all for the shop let me think yeah it is all that I wanted to say about the shop as always if you have questions just let me know because I maybe I'm not thinking about everything that you might want to know so yes um, and then moving on to the very last section of um, this podcast and the, the fun one is uh, a giveaway so like i said at the start uh we have since the start of january we have gone over 2000 subscribers and we're pretty much at 3000 i think we're like 2900 something and that makes me really happy and i know i'm not the biggest podcaster out there and other people have like 10,000 subscribers and things like that and great for them really really i'm like really happy for them but yeah, I'm I'm really excited. It just blows my mind that there's like over 2,000 people who are interesting in my rambles about yarn and fabric and knitting and sewing and things. So thank you. Thank you very much for being here. And I want to celebrate that because, because it's fun and I think it's worth celebrating. And I will celebrate that by doing a little giveaway. Um, and what I will give away is a skein of yarn and a set of stitch markers. So just before Christmas, I went through my stash and sort of sorted out through what I had. And um, there were a few skeins that I absolutely love, but since I bought them, my taste in shades and colors and things have changed a little bit. And I don't really see myself using them anymore. And I don't want to just throw them away. So I put them aside for either gifts for people that I would knit them, or to give as giveaway, because they are beautiful yarns. So the yarn that will come in this giveaway is this beautiful skein of red yarn. I hope you can see it well. By, um, who is it by? By Beehive Yarn. She is a yarn dyer in the UK. And um, yeah, it's a really nice, deep red um, I think the reason why I don't feel like I would like to knit it anymore, or not for me anyway, is uh, it's a bit on the cold side and I like really warm colors. So yeah, that's all. Otherwise, the yarn is really beautiful. It's called Raven Red on her dolly base and it's 100% Superwash Extra Fine Merino DK, 230 gram, no, 230 meters per 115 grams. So the winner of the giveaway will get this skein along with a set of stitch markers from my shop of their choice, whichever one they want. I will make it for them um, and I will ship it. The It's open internationally, so anywhere you are, feel free to participate. And I guess to enter, we'll just keep it easy and just uh, be sure you're subscribed to the channel and then also um, leave me a comment below. Uh, so that I can use a uh, random comment picker so I can pick the, the winner that way. So yeah, just leave a comment in the um, below the video. Tell me anything you like, really. I'm not, um, yeah, just anything you like. Um, if you don't really know what to write, but you want to enter, just let me know where you're watching from. It's, I'm always super happy to know where people are. And it's always fun to read through the comments and see where everyone is or let me know what project you're working on or what project you're looking forward to work on or anything like that. And um, yeah, I think that will be it for the, for the giveaway. I'm really excited. It's gonna be open until, I guess I'll draw the winner and announce the winner the next time I publish a podcast. So in about three weeks to a month and um, I'll announce the winner there and then I will get in touch with you to figure out where to ship it. Um, as always because this seems to happen all the time like i will never ask you for any payment card detail any of that like if you get anything like this it's a scam 
I will uh, get in touch with you just asking you where you want me to ship the parcel basically that's all so yeah I, it's it's really a shame that uh, we have to deal with that every time someone does a giveaway or does something but it's, it's the real the reality of the internet these days so just so you know I will never ask you for anything other than an address where you would like me to ship yarn and stitch markers to you if you are the winner of the giveaway all right this is all I had to talk to you about today, everything I wanted to share with you today. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I um, hope you had a nice time watching. And um, yeah, I thank you again very much for being here, for giving my videos a little thumbs up, for leaving a comment or subscribing to my channel. If you're a new viewer, once again, a very warm welcome to you. And if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. It's always so nice to, um, to know that you're here and to read comments of people that have been watching for such a long time. So I feel like even though we've never met, I feel like we're friends and that is really lovely and uh, I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Bye!